Messages on CD for distribution. Convert your sermons for iPods, MP3s. Edit your messages for radio broadcasting and internet streaming. Call 754 24 Music and watch as God convert His people using your gifts. Call Rhythm and Gospel 754 246 8742. Here's author and speaker Mark Hanley with today's Lamp Wider Moment. One reader of a recent blog entry raised an excellent point concerning the standard of violence on stage. How much is too much? Who sets the standard? Well, I believe the Bible is a good standard of how much violence is too much. And how ironic I use the Bible as a standard. You see, in the Bible we have someone cutting off someone else's head. We have a woman driving a stake through a man's head while he sleeps in her lap. We have a man cutting up his mother in 12 pieces and then mailing her to various parts of the country. We have a man with a spear who stabs to death a husband and pregnant wife. It doesn't get any more gory than this. Now, before the Bible loses all credibility of the standard violence, it is important to note that in each one of these cases, the writer does not elaborate on the violent act. It is usually one sentence and the act is over. Furthermore, these scenes are not visual. They are left to the reader's imagination. Here's what's important. If the reader's imagination is not already defiled with graphic and immoral violence, the reader or hearer will find the violent scene objectionable, reprehensible, repugnant. 
their conscience will not allow them to enjoy the scene. Today, graphic violence on screen has become a form of entertainment, which leads to a desensitization of our values. We no longer wince when we see violence. I'm Mark Andrew. You've been listening to a lamplighter moment with Mark Hamby. Mark's vision is to offer redemptive hope to a lost culture through role models that build biblical character and values. More biblical insights are available at lamplighter.net. There you can view the entire Lamplighter collection of rare character-building stories. Again, that's lamplighter.net. Gospel, united to say, it's the Guts Gospel Show, a variety talk show with a Christian view. Your host, Nikki B, featuring open discussion, event spotlight, and special guests. Tune in weekdays, three times a day. Wake up for the morning show at 7 a.m. Tune in for the midday show at 3.30 p.m. And ride home with the evening show at 6 p.m. And Saturdays at 10 a.m. The Guts Gospel Show. The Guts Gospel Show. With your host, Nikki B. Gospel. United to say Tune in, call in, and log in. Let's talk about it, laugh about it, and pray about it with Nikki B right here on this station. Tune in online and listen to it on the internet. www.gutsay.webs.com. It's the Guts Gospel Show. Gospel United to say a variety talk show with a Christian view. This commercial is sponsored by Rhythm and Gospel Network. We're replacing the blues with the Guts News. Alright, South Florida, it's already getting better. I know y'all know it's getting better already, right? That is none of Vanilla Murphy from a project known as God Chaser. And it's already getting better. Or so the title is Already Getting Better. And how many of you know it's already getting better? God's working it out for me. Yeah, tell somebody, God's working this thing out for me. Yeah, you gotta understand, you gotta believe, and you gotta have faith, and you can't just say it, but you gotta just have the understanding that God really is making it get better for me. He actually does want things to get better for me. And God, uh, He appeared. I know that's what we talked about last week, and we're going to kind of finish that up on this week. And then move on to talk about the Holy Spirit coming, and that God sends His Holy Spirit to us. It's already getting better. Yeah, Jesus died on the cross. Uh, you thought everything was gone. You thought all hope was lost. He came, he appeared unto you, and then on, on top of that, after he appeared, he said, I'm promising you something. I'm going to give you the Holy Ghost. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you uh, what you need in order to have the better. Uh-huh. So we thank God for that, and we thank God for each and every one of you. 
who are tuned into the broadcast. You are tuned into Guts Gospel and I just say, bring you the information you need for transformation within South Florida and all over the world, a variety talk show, the Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V. And you can call us by uh, joining the conversation, call us, or just listen up. All you got to do is call 877 217 5375. That's 877 217 5375. Option number two brings you to the broadcast. There's a, a couple of other options that will take you a couple other places. But the one that you need for the broadcast is number two. Number two will get you to the broadcast so that you can either uh, speak with us, ask for prayer, whatever it is you want to do uh, during the broadcast times. You can also press two just to listen in to the broadcast. Maybe where you are, you're not hearing it as well as you'd like to. You just call in and listen to it on your phone. Keep it real. Outreach ministry. Minister Jerome Turner. Let not your heart be troubled, but keep it real. And contact Minister Jerome Turner at 754-234-4547. That's 754-234-4547. Make sure you let him know you heard it here on WEXY 1520, your inspiration station. Who knows what will happen if you just let him know you heard it right here on WEXY 1520, your inspiration station. Now, we left off when you were talking about Jesus explaining how all things had to be fulfilled. And so when Jesus had finished instructing them, he led them to Bethany. The scene occurred on the 40th day after his resurrection. In this passage, it is difficult to differentiate between the event that happened the first day and what happened on the 40th day. However, it is probable that Jesus' eating to convince them happened on the first day. And verse 44 could be the beginning of the narrative of the 40th day events. Regardless, in the last earthly scene of Jesus with his disciples, he lifted up his hands and blessed them and prayed with them and prayed for them, their safety and an evil world, their unity for a convincing testimony. And he blessed them to have a fruitful ministry. Uh, this is what is the inheritance or the prayer that Jesus has even for us today. And the good thing about Jesus is that his promises are yea and amen. He will do exactly what he said he would do. So his promises are fulfilled. Before the resurrection, they referred to Jesus most often as teacher or master. After his appearance to Peter, they called him by the title Lord. And now they are filled with joy, ready to worship him. They knew without a doubt that they were with the Lord of Lords, the Son of God incarnate. He deserved their worship, and they will dedicate their lives to his service, even to the point of death. Are we there? If we're not there, we need to get there. If we are not at the place where we are, we have such a relationship with God, we know Him so intimately, we have experienced Him in such a way that we are ready to give up our life for Him, then we don't know Him as, as well as we ought to. However, as He just recommended to them, they went back to Jerusalem to wait for the promise of the Father, the Holy Spirit. And yet they had that kind of zeal without the power of the Holy Ghost. Many of us say we have the Holy Spirit and we're not willing to die for anything. We're not willing to uh, crucify our flesh for anything. We're not willing to lose for anything. The fulfillment of the promise will be given, will be the green light for the start of the ministry, their ministry. This is where it begins. This is the birthing of the church. This is the birthing of the new covenant. This is the a manifestation of the kingdom of God on earth. And here we are experiencing the kingdom of heaven. And we are not understanding why there's lack in the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven because we're not operating under the principles. There are principles that were set in order for us to operate by. If we were to operate by them, there would be no lack. Let me get back to this so we can complete this and move on to the Holy Ghost coming. Because I know many of you are really ready for the Holy Ghost to come. But before I get there, i got to go to a break. And we do thank God for you all tuning into the broadcast. You are tuning into Guts, Gospel United Save. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back after this.
it will be all right, y'all. Yeah, that's Yancy Simmons with the, and the Gospel Tides. It will be all right. When you see Jesus, it'll be all right. Don't, don't fret. Don't worry. Don't be uh, messed up. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you a little news. You can use up my find interesting. Maybe you will as well. And then you're just not going to fret about this. Just something you need to know and pray and say, God, I thank you because it's going to be all right. Because the Pentagon struggles with high costs of health care. Yeah, can you imagine the Pentagon is saying it's just costing too much to keep people healthy. The loud, insistent calls in Washington uh, to rein in the rising cost of Social Security and Medicare ignore major and expensive entitlement program, the military's health care system. Despite dire warnings from three defense secretaries about the uncontrollable costs, Congress has repeatedly rebuffed Pentagon efforts to establish higher out-of-pocket fees and enrollment costs for military, family, and retiree health care as an initial step in addressing a harsh fiscal reality. The cost of military health care has almost tripled since 2001, from the $19 billion to to $53 billion in 2012, and it stands at, a, at 10% of the entire defense budget. Even more daunting, the Congressional Budget Office estimates that military health care costs could reach $65 billion by 2017 and $95 billion by 2030. On Wednesday, when President Barack Obama submits his fiscal 2014 budget, the Pentagon blueprint is expected to include several congressionally unpopular proposals, requests for two rounds of domestic base closings in 2015 and 2017 a pay raise for only 1% of military personnel, and a revival of last year's plan to increase health care fees and implement new ones, according to several defense analysts. Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel insist, insisted this past week that the military has no choice as it faces a $487 billion reduction in projected spending over the next decade and possibly tens of billions more as Tea Party years and other fiscal conservatives embrace automatic spending cuts as the best means to reduce the government's trillion-dollar deficit. The greatest fiscal threat to the military is not declining budget, Hagel warned, but rather the growing imbalance in where that money is being spent internally. In other words, money decided, dedicated to health care or benefits is money that is not spent on preparing troops for battle or pilots for missions. Hagel in echoed his predecessors, Leon Panetta, who said personnel costs have put the Pentagon on an unstable course, and former Pentagon chief Robert Gates, who bluntly said in 2009 that health care is eating the department alive. In his speech last week, Hagel quoted retired Admiral Gary Ruff Rohead, the former Navy chief who offered a devastating assessment of the future Pentagon. Without changes, Roy had said, the department could be transformed from an agency protecting the nation to an agency administering benefit programs capable of buying only limited quantities of irrelevant and overpriced equipment. The military health care program known as TRICARE provides health coverage to nearly 10 million active duty personnel, retirees, reservists, and their families. Currently, retirees and their dependents outnumber active duty members and their families, 5.5 million to 3.3 million. Powerful veteran groups, retired military officer associations, and other opponents of shifting more costs to beneficiaries argue that members of the armed forces make extraordinary sacrifices and endure hardships unique to the services, ones even more pronounced after a decade plus of wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Members of the military have faced repeated de deployments had to uproot their families for constant moves and deal with limits on buying a home or a spouse, establishing a career because of their transient life. Retirement pay and low health care costs are vital to attracting members of the all-volunteer army. If you do, don't take care of people, they're not going to enlist, they're not going to re-enlist, said Joe Davis, a spokesman for the veterans of foreign wars. Resistance in Congress to health care changes was evident in the recently passed spending bill to keep the government running through September 30th. Tucked into the sweeping bill was a single provision stating emphatically that none of the funds made available by this act may be used by the Secretary of Defense to implement an enrollment fee for the TRICARE, uh, for, the TRICARE for Life program. 
The program provides no fee supplemental insurance to retirees 65 and older who are eligible for Medicare. The Pentagon repeatedly has pushed for establishment of the fee, only to face congressional opposition. The provision in the spending bill blocking an enrollment fee had widespread support among Republicans and Democrats, according to congressional aides. The Pentagon, nonetheless, is expected to ask again in the 2014 budget for an enrollment fee. The department is also likely to see increases in fees and deductibles for working age retirees and try again to peg increases in them to rising costs as measured by the National Health Care Expenditure Index produced by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. That index rose 4.2% in 2012 and is projected rise by 3.8% this year. In recent years, Congress has agreed to tie any future increases to the typically smaller percentage increase in military retirees' cost of living adjustment, which this year is 1.7%. Either way, a military retiree under the age of 65 and their family members pay a fair, far smaller annual enrollment fee than the average federal or civilian, 230 a year for an individual, 160 for a family. There is no deductible. Lawmakers offer response was to establish the Military Compensation and Retirement Modernization Commission to study the issue of benefits and other recommendations on how the Pentagon can address the problem. The commission was created in this year's Defense Authorization Bill. Nobody wants to touch it because people are confused about who it impacts, said Lawrence Korb, a former Assistant Defense Secretary and now a senior fellow at the Liberal Learning Center for American Progress. It's not going to impact people on active duty. It's not going to impact veterans because they're taken care of by the VA. Basically, it's working age retirees. Korb said he wished Hegel had been more explicit in his warning about the impact of benefit costs. He did lay out what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do something or we're going to end up like General Motors and spending everything on people not working for us anymore. Gordon Adams, a professor at American University, who was a senior official at the Office of Management and Budget, said limited savings in the short term and from charges in retirement, changes in retirement, rules, or other benefits present a challenge in making the case for change. The savings are downstream, but you only get the downstream if you get in the row boat now. Adams said otherwise, you can never get downstream. You just waiting on the dock all the time because you don't think it'll save you money up front. So make use of what you got. This is the time to do it. This is the time to get involved. We thank you all for tuning into the broadcast. You are tuned in to Guts Gospel United State. A variety talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. I'm your host, Nikki V. And we thank you so much for tuning into the broadcast and being a part of what God's doing right here and right now. We are glad to be able to share with you all and talk with you all about the, th the series and the things that we were talking about. Wrapping up last week with The Lord Appears, and we're going right into uh, The Holy Ghost Comes. And uh, in verses 50 to 53, it reads like this, uh, Luke chapter 24, 50 to 53. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands, and he blessed and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and now continually and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. This is what happens when you have a real experience and a real encounter. It helps you to go to church. I know supposed to say, Well, did you just say that? Yes. I'm not talking about religiosity, I'm saying that it makes you want to desire to be among fellow believers. They were hiding out. They were doing all kinds of things. Once they saw Jesus, once he gave them back the hope that they had thought that was gone for good, they went back to fellowshipping with other believers. They went back to that. They joined back in with that existence and that life in that kind of way. Now, I just want to say attention. Opelaka, Bunchy Park, Miami Gardens, Fail Stop is in your town. It's in the Opelok of Triangle um, and also the Bungie Park and Miami Gardens area. 
Retired teachers, committed educators, and supportive volunteers are knocking on doors in search of children and adults who are interested in receiving free tutoring in reading. And they are coming to empower you to be prepared for a changing world of work that is grounded in reading ability. So don't cry, don't be shy. I'm telling you why. Educators who believe that you can learn are saying, just try. They'll stop fostering accountability in learning with students, teachers, organizations, and parents. The number to call to get involved and to be able to get uh, all the information that you need about this program is 954-410-7175. That's 954-410-7175. We thank you for tuning into the broadcast. You are tuning in to Guts Cosby and I to save a variety of talk show with a Christian point of view, hoping that you will have the guts to tell somebody about Jesus. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 